Hey guys, this video is a compilation of clips from my short series called Learn to Hack, where each day I show a new concept or tool that's used in ethical hacking. Sometimes these short concepts will build off of each other, so I'm going to be uploading about a week's worth of shorts as a full length video each week for those people that may have missed the shorts, or if you want to be able to pause and rewind on certain days to better understand the material. The first week was mainly about discovery and enumeration, as well as exploiting a backdoor vulnerability to gain a root shell on a victim server. If you'd like to follow along, you can set up the same lab that I'm using in the video by watching this video that I made previously on my channel. If you like this sort of content or you find it useful, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more, and feel free to join my Discord if you'd like to be a part of this community. Alright, with all that, enjoy the video, and happy hacking! Sometimes when you're doing a capture the flag or an assessment, you're just given a range of IP addresses or put on a certain subnet. If this is the case, the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out which IP addresses on that subnet are actual live hosts that we can attack, and this can easily be done using Nmap. So the first thing we must do is figure out the subnet that our attack box is currently on, which can be done with a quick ifconfig command. So typing ifconfig in your console will show you which IP address that you're currently on and the subnet that it resides on. With a quick ifconfig, we see that we're on the 10.0.2.0/24 subnet with an IP address of 10.0.2.5. To figure out what other IP addresses are active on this subnet, we can use this nmap command here. So this command is gonna scan every IP address on the 10.0.2.0/24 subnet. So that would be 10.0.2.0 all the way up to 10.0.2.255. The dash sn parameter is gonna disable port scanning because we're not interested in that yet. And the dash pe parameter is gonna do an ICMP echo request or ping request against each IP address in that subnet. The command may ask you for your password because we're running with pseudo privileges. And once the scan finishes, we should see every IP address on our subnet that responded to a ping. In our example here, we've got 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and 2.5, which is us. Now that we know which IP addresses are active on our subnet, we see another virtual box machine online that isn't our attack box, which is 10.0.2.4. To figure out what ports are open on that box, we can use nmap again. This time the command is going to be sudo nmap dash p dash 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 min dash rate. 10,000, and then our IP address, in this case 10.0.2.4. The dash p dash parameter is going to check all 65,536 ports for a response, and the dash dash min dash rate 10,000 will make it so that 10,000 packets will be sent at the same time to speed up the checks on all the ports. This number can be lowered if you're trying to be less noisy, but will result in a longer scan time. Once the scan completes, we should see every open port on the scan device. Now that we know which ports are open on this server, we can enumerate them further to determine what services and versions of those services that are running on each port, along with some other interesting information. For the sake of simplicity, I'm only going to do this against three of the ports that we found in the previous scan, which are ports 21, 22, and 80. These ports are generally associated with FTP, SSH, and HTTP respectively. So the nmap command we're going to be running is sudo nmap p 212280 and then the IP address, in our case 10.0.2.4, and then the parameter sv. So this command is going to look at the three mentioned ports, and the dash sv parameter is going to check for the service and version of that service running on each port. Once the scan completes, we see the software and the version of the software that's running on port 21, 22, and 80. If we want to take things a step further, we can add on the dash sc parameter, which is going to also run nmap's default scripts against each port to determine some other information that we may find useful. So the results of the scan with the dash sc parameter found things like FTP anonymous login that's enabled, as well as the title of the web page that's running on port 80. If you ever find yourself in a situation where nmap finds an open port but is unable to find the service or version running on that port, you may have better luck fingerprinting the port manually using netcat. We can use the tool netcat to manually connect to any port on a device by typing in NC, the IP address, and the port. So in our situation, if we want to connect to port 21, we would type in NC 10.0.2.4 space 21. So after hitting enter on this command, we see that we connected to port 21 on IP address 10.0.2.4. And as you can see, we have the service of VSFTPD 2.3.4 displayed to us as the service banner. Running this command again against port 22 shows us the version of SSH running on the server. And once again, running netcat on port 80 will connect to the HTTP port and will display the HTML of the web page that is running on that port. When we ran the default scripts against our victim machine, we saw that FTP anonymous login was enabled on port 21. This misconfiguration allows anyone to connect to the FTP service using the credentials anonymous anonymous and snoop around. We can exploit this misconfiguration using the command FTP anonymous at 10.0.2.4 whatever your IP address of your victim server is. And after typing anonymous as the password, we have authenticated. Once we authenticate, we can then type help for a list of commands we can try against the server. And in my scenario here, if I type in ls, it will list a hello.txt file. And I can save this hello.txt file to my local machine by typing get 
hello.txt. This will transfer over to the local directory that I was in when I entered the FTP client. So if we exit out of FTP and do an ls, we see the hello.txt and we can look at what it says by typing in cat hello.txt. In this case, it says hello world. Anonymous login for FTP did not net us anything useful in this scenario, but maybe the version of FTP running will. Going back to our Nmap scan, we saw that VSFTPD 2.3.4 was running on port 21. If we Google VSFTPD 2.3.4 vulnerability, you'll find many results for a backdoor command execution vulnerability. The first result we see will be for exploit-db.com, which is an exploit database that you will likely be using a lot in your CTFs and assessments if you aren't already. So going to exploitdb.com, we could download this exploit and run it to get a backdoor shell on our vulnerable server. But first I wanna keep digging. If we look up the CVE associated with this vulnerability, CVE 2011-2523, we find a GitHub page that explains the vulnerability very well. In July 2011, it was discovered that VSFTPD version 2.3.4, downloadable from the master site, had been compromised. Users logging into a compromised VSFTPD 2.3.4 server may issue a smiley face as the username and gain a command shell on port 6200. This was not an issue of a security hole in VSFTPD. Instead, someone had uploaded a different version of VSFTPD, which contained a backdoor. So to exploit the backdoor vulnerability in VSFTPD 2.3.4, we can connect to port 21 using netcat by typing in the command nc 10.0.2.4.21. Once we're connected, we want to specify a username that contains a smiley face. So in this scenario, I will type in user cyber Ryan and then a smiley face. And then we can specify any password we want. So in this case, I will do pass test. So that smiley face username has opened up a back door on port 6200 that we can connect to to gain remote access to the server. So in another terminal, we want to type nc 10.0.2.4.6200 and you should have a root shell on the victim machine. We can confirm this by typing who am I? And as you can see, we are root. Being able to exploit vulnerabilities manually and understanding how the exploit works is very important, but it can also be very tedious. Thankfully, a tool called Metasploit has thousands of exploits that can be automatically ran against a victim machine, including the exploit for VSFTPD 2.3.4. To launch Metasploit, you're going to want to type MSF console into your terminal. You can use the dash Q parameter to get rid of the banner. Once that has loaded, we can search for our exploit by typing search VSFTPD 2.3.4. We see we have one match and can select the exploit module by typing use and then the number that is associated with the module here. So in our case, use zero. Once we have selected our exploit, we can fill in the necessary information, which can be seen by typing show options. We see that the R port field has already been filled out to be port 21, which is correct but we're going to need to fill in the R hosts field to tell Metasploitable the IP address of our vulnerable server. We can do that by typing set R hosts 10.0.2.4 or whatever your IP address for your server is. Another show options will confirm that our R host is set correctly. And now we can type run to run the exploit. And after a few seconds, we'll have a root shell on our vulnerable server.